Recently, before implementing a new feature in Pandoc Include Code, a Pandoc filter that I have written, I needed to make some changes to the code. The program allowed what should have been considered conflicting modes of operation. In this episode, I'll perform the same modification to show you how the right data structure can guide and improve your implementation. <laughs> The purpose of this filter is to allow code snippets to be included from external files instead of copy-pasting snippets into the Markdown document. By specifying the source code language and with the include attribute specifying a file path, the filter will populate the code block with the contents of that file. By using the start line and end line, you can control the range of lines included from the file. Another way of including a smaller part of a file is to specify a named snippet. This expects you to have two lines in the included file, usually source code comments, specifying the start and end of the snippet. Let's have a look at the example.hs file. Lines 1 to 6 are included by the range code block and 9 to 11 by the snippet code block. These two comments mark the start and end of the main snippet. Rendering this markdown document to HTML, you can get something like this in a web browser. The specified parts of example.hs are included and highlighted, all using Pandoc. In the feature request I got, a user asked for the ability to combine the number lines class in Pandoc with Pandoc include code and its named snippets to have included snippets show line numbers starting from their original line number in the source file. The following HTML shows the expected output. Notice how it starts at 9 and not 1. When I started on adding support for number lines, I quickly realized a flaw in the implementation of Pandoc include code. It had three modes of operation including an entire file, including a line range from a file, and including a named snippet from a file. The first case was all right, but the second two had some overlap. There was nothing stopping a user from specifying both snippet and start line and end line. Using both in combination did not make any sense to me, and it made the feature request much harder to implement. So I decided to first do some refactoring, making the implementation explicitly state the modes of operation and making them mutually exclusive. Let's head back to the revision before my refactoring and see where we end up. The inclusion spec data type represents the work to be done by the filter. It carries the file to include, the optional snippet name, the optional range of lines, and also a number of columns to dedent. We won't touch dedent at all, so you can ignore it. Remember how I said the modes of operation should be mutually exclusive. If you look at this data type, and specifically at the snippet and range fields, we are not representing that design decision in a clear way. By using two optional modes, we do allow for them both to be present. Let's cut them out and make the mode explicit using a data type. The inclusion mode data type will have three constructors, one for each valid mode of operation. Snippet mode, range mode, and entire file mode. We want these to be comparable and printable using show, and we see from the type error that it requires the range type to provide the corresponding instances. Jumping to the next error, we see that there is no longer a range in scope. This is one of the fields we removed from the inclusion spec. Let's see how the filter line range function is actually used. Here we see that the definition for all steps reads the included file splits the lines, filters by the line range, 
extracts the named snippet, dedents the lines, and finally joins the lines back together. Now that we're making the modes mutually exclusive, we can combine filter line range and only snippet into a single step. We'll rename it include by mode. Instead of asking for an optional range, we'll ask for and pattern match on the mode. In case we are in range mode, we can do the same thing as before. If we are in entire file mode, we'll just return the lines unchanged. The pattern match for just in only snippet needs to be merged in. Nice! We now have all three modes covered. Jumping to the next error, we see that the parsing that constructs our inclusion spec needs some changes as well. Instead of the optional range and snippet, we now want a single mode. We rename get range to parse range mode and wrap the parse range with the range mode constructor. In the same way, snippet becomes snippet mode wrapping the parsed snippet name with the snippet mode constructor. We select a single mode by transforming a list of maybe inclusion mode values to a list of modes. The cat maybe function filters out the nothing values and extracts the just values. Pattern matching on the resulting list if we have no mode specified, we default to entire file mode. In case we have a single mode, we use that. In case we have more than one mode specified, we throw an error describing the conflicting modes. We need to import cat maybes from the data maybe module. Jumping to the next error, we are reminded that we have yet to define the conflicting modes error constructor. It will hold the list of conflicting modes. And in the last error in this exercise, the compiler kindly informs us that the format error function is partial, so we add the missing case. Next error? Nope, we're done. I hope this highlights how a suitable data structure can guide you towards a much more solid program using a very simple Haskell code. There are some tests that need changes that I haven't shown you. And of course, the feature request itself that led to this modification, which I've left out. If you're interested, drop a comment on YouTube or on Patreon and I might do a follow-up video in the same style. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please consider supporting my work at patreon.com slash Haskell at work. Thanks.